Hello everybody, uh, my name is Petr Čejka, I work for the Czech Agriculture and Food Inspection Authority and my presentation, uh, I was asked and I have the honor to tell you somewhere here something about legal framework of e-food. Uh, in my presentation I will uh, give you two parts in fact. The first part is about the legal framework, the current and future, and the second part will be about the possible improvements to the EU law, law from the perspective of competent authority. So let's start with the first part. Uh, we all know the current legal framework, it is the food law, uh, regulation, general food law, where we have the definition of food business operator, the definition of placing on the market. All these definitions are up to date, they don't need any revision because they are general enough to cover e-commerce operators as well. Uh, we, we, got, um, uh, we got a new regulation on food information. Also, the definition of food information is uh, very up-to-date because it includes uh, also information which is provided to consumers by means of, uh, by the tools which help to uh, sell products uh, by means of distance selling. Uh, the regulation 882 was revised and we will get uh, soon uh, the new official control regulation. Last but not least, we shouldn't forget the e-commerce directive. This is not the food law, but we see in the world of e-commerce that uh, the competent authorities which are, uh, which are controlling foodstuffs uh, can't live longer without, uh, without taking into account the e-commerce directive and the type of operators which are which are defined in this e-commerce directive and in the respective national laws which uh, transpose this directive. So we will have a look on this uh, later as well. Um, now, the, the new OCR regulation, official control regulation, it will apply since uh, starting 14 December 2019, uh, so really soon. I think all member states are getting ready for this regulation. In some member states already, legal works are, are, are on the way. Some member st states are uh, preparing, but we need to understand in the world of e-commerce that uh, all member states have to have the same level of powers, uh, only by this way we can get the, to, to get the result because one member state is dependent to another. Uh, the three new provisions which are related to e-commerce in the OCR regulation, it is Article 15, notification of activity, Article 36, official online sampling, and Article 138, closing of ex websites, let's call it like this. Uh, the first one, uh, notification of activity in Article 15. It was added to the regulation that uh, the operators need to provide all the competent authorities with, with the following updated details and apart the name and the legal form, they need to inform also on their specific activities they carry out, including activities undertaken by means of distance communication. Uh, this will provide the authorities with a better overview of the activities of operators, also in the world of means of distance selling. Um, some member states have already included it in their registration forms that they require the operators to indicate also all the relevant websites the operators operate or they employ for their business. So that's one of the one of the changes or addition to the current legal framework, uh, where we could we could uh, we could require it on the, the on the basis of the current regulation as well. But here we uh, get the specific notion of of the distance selling as well. The second and probably the, la the biggest change uh, and the thing for which many member states are waiting is the is the um, legal basis for sampling of products uh, sold uh, by uh, means of distance communication. It will allow to competent, it will allow competent authorities to use samples which were ordered from operators by, the, by them uh, without identifying themselves, to use these samples as, an offic as official samples for, for their controls. Uh, some member states are, are already now in the position that they sample products online, but it is on the basis of their national legal basis. 
uh, all member states will get these powers uh, from uh, 14 December uh, 2019. So that, that will be a huge change because uh, competent authorities will finally have the possibility to reach an actual sample of, of the product, either use it for identification of the operator because that's how the sampling could work as well when the operator is not identified on the website. Sometimes it will help you to, to, to carry out mystery shopping and to reach some uh, information about the operator who is hiding on the website. So, uh, so through this, you can, you can, it help, it can help you to trace the operator. Uh, but also, it will definitely serve to the competent authorities as a real sample, which they will send to laboratory, and on the uh, on the basis of this sample, they can uh, get to their control finding. Last but not least is the closing of website. It is Article 138 where we uh, have the list of actions which member state, which competent authorities may take once they identify a non-compliance. Uh, the actual action uh, is in the letter A, A I of this uh, of this article. Uh, so the competent authorities shall order the cessation for an appropriate period of time of all or part of the activities of the concert operator, including the internet sites it operates or employs. This action which is there is, it, you see it's quite easy, it is written in an easy way, uh, but uh, for the competent authorities it will be quite a challenge because uh, we see the internet is not, uh, is not bound by by the by the uh, by the territory of one member state, so we will uh, see that it will be quite complicated. Uh, in Kafia, in our authority, we have tried to analyze what are the possibilities we have as a competent authority to uh, to seize a website. Uh, so the level of the cessation of a website, uh, there are two ways we can approach it. Either we can reach the removal of a non-compliant content of a specific order, for example, of a specific medicinal claim which shouldn't be there, or we can try to restrict the access to the online interface totally. Uh, so these are two ways how to do it. The, the, the OCR is saying that uh, the, the measures, the actions, the competent authorities are taken must be proportionate with regard to the, to the non-compliance they have identified. So in case of uh, non-compliant order uh, uh, offer, one offer is not probably, it's not uh, proportionate to seize the whole website. So probably we will, we will target on removal of a specific offer of a specific product from the website. Uh, there we need to know to whom to talk to about this, to whom to impose such an action. And uh, the easiest way and the most straightforward way is to impose such, a, such an action to e-food business operator, the operator who is behind the website. And these uh, operators are capable to, to react on the level of an individual offer of, a, uh, of an individual product. Also, e-marketplaces, e-platforms, as far as we know, uh, they should be also capable to, ca to take an action on the level of the individual offer or product. But with the e-platforms, we, uh, we, we need to be careful uh, because uh, normally, if they are not in the position of food business operators, they are, they are, they are the service providers and we Go, we are not in the food law, we go to the e-commerce law, and uh, there we need to rely on the e-commerce directive and their secondary liability with the content which they, which they enable to show to customers. So it, I will get to it later as well. Uh, Information society service providers, the, the really the technical one we, where we can't uh, talk about food business operators at all, are the, the, the one who, has pro, who are providing hosting or who are pro, providing internet connection 
uh, or the registrar or national central registrar uh, registrars, these operators are capable to react only on the level of the whole website, so they can, uh, they can seize the whole website, they can't differentiate among uh, individual offer and the whole website. So the competent authorities must, when, when they identify the non-compliance, they must think uh, and they must impose the measure first to the food business operator. If the food business operator is not reactive, then they need to look for another operator who can, uh, who can solve the non-compliance on the website. Uh, there we get to the e-commerce directive, which is the current legal framework. And uh, for competent authorities, this is another challenge because we need to get familiar with this, uh, with this part of law when we want to be efficient when controlling e-commerce. Uh, we, we can find in this e-commerce directive articles Article 12, 14, 15, uh, where uh, the responsibilities of these operators are laid down. Uh, and uh, those information society service providers who are responsible for transmission of information, access to a communication network, or are responsible for hosting, so for storing of the information for the recipient of the service for some food business operator, they are not liable for the information transmitted, stored on condition that they do, uh, they do not initiate, influence the transmission, uh, do not have the actual knowledge of illegal activity or information, and if they act exp expeditiously once they are notified of the non-compliance. So these operators are not food business operators, uh, but once they are notified about the non-compliance, they need to act, and if they don't, they become uh, liable for that information. What is important, and I would like to, uh, I would like to bring your attention to, to these articles, that in all these articles, 12, 14, 15, you will find a space for member states there's always a, a paragraph saying that it's up to member states and uh, it allows the member states to, uh, to require or there's a possibility for a court or administrative authority of requiring the service provider to terminate or prevent an infringement. So probably when you go back to your national legislation, to the transposition of this directive, you will find there an authority who, is, uh, who has the means to impose a measure or action to this type of operators and require them to terminate or prevent an infringement. In the Czech Republic, we have approached it in, a, in such a way that we, uh, we asked for this power for ourselves, for CAFIA, because it's so, such a complex situation, and to discuss such a situation with an with a, with a authority which is completely uh, out of the business, they know nothing about foodstuffs, so we decided that, uh, that uh, the competent authority in the field of foodstuffs have the power to, uh, to require the, the service providers to act. It, we will get this in future. We don't have this power for the time being, but we are working on it to, to get this power. Uh, Article 14, uh, this is, uh, we're still in the first part of the presentation, the current legal framework. I think you all are familiar with this Article 14 of, uh, of uh, Regulation 1169. Uh, w basically, it is saying that all the mandatory food information must be provided uh, before the purchase is concluded and uh, the only exception is date marking, lot number, but all the mandatory information must be there free of charge, uh, and uh, that's, that's basically it. I think I will move on to the second part of my presentation. Uh, the second part of my presentation will focus on possible improvements to the EU law from the competent authority perspective. Uh, five different 
different uh, situations. Powers of competent authorities. That's the, I think that's the basis of our work of competent authorities. We need to have sufficient powers in order to uh, carry out our job. Uh, responsibility of uh, service providers, e-platforms, mentioned yesterday several times. Responsibility of payment service providers, uh, registration notification of activity, and last but not least, enforcement of sanctions. So first, uh, powers of competent authorities. You might say, and the commissioner said that yesterday as well, that the current legal framework is sufficient. Uh, let's have a look to OCR, whether it is really sufficient. Uh, the OCR is written in, in that way that it gives the powers to the competent authorities in a very general way. So having a look on this, this from this perspective, it is, it is good. Uh, but it is up to the member state member states and competent authorities and their legislators to, uh, to convince actually their legislators that they should get all the powers which are necessary to control e-commerce. You see the powers here, uh, so to have the procedures in place to ensure the effectiveness and appropriateness of official controls, have the legal powers to perform official controls and to take the action provided for in this regulation. That, that's it, nothing specific in the OCR there but it is very general and I would like to offer you a recipe uh, when you will go back home uh, in your member states and you will think about the powers you should get in order to be efficient when controlling e-commerce. The recipe would be to have a look into another piece of legislation which was adopted in the same time is the regulation on cooperation between national authorities responsible for the enforcement of consumer protection laws. And there's an Article 9 in this regulation which provides a lot of specific powers which are needed and they take into account also the online offers, online markets. Uh, to act under, the, uh, under a cover identity, not only by test purchases, that's probably the problem or the, the limit, it's not a problem, it's the limit of the OCR regulation that we have the undercover investigation with regard to test purchases. But uh, we should, we as competent authorities should insist in, uh, in the respective member states that in order to carry out the tasks to investigate e-commerce, we need to have uh, powers this specific power to act under a cover identity. Uh, two weeks ago in the FLAP meeting group, we were discussing the closed group on Facebook. Uh, the groups which are pretending that, the, that within their group the law doesn't apply. You need to be capable to, to reach this group and to enter this group and to be capable to monitor what such a group is doing. And for that purpose, you need to have the possibility to act under a cover identity as someone else, not just for the purpose of sampling, but for the purpose of monitoring of an activity of food business operators on social media, in social media world. So I would really recommend to competent authorities to think about this, to have this basic thing. Uh, to require, in the Czech Republic we discussed it, uh, we were even thinking about the complete cover identity, like having an ID, etc. Then the Ministry of Interior said, no, that's too far. But uh, we're talking about the fact that you create a face, fake Facebook account, that, that you create uh, that you create a fake email address. Of course, everything is documented in your file. Uh, the, the judge can have a look on it later on in the proceedings, but uh, that's something what, what is really necessary. The second, to require any natural person or legal person to provide any re relevant information, data or documents. That's the Article 9 of this regulation. So you see any natural legal person, so this would definitely cover also payment service providers, banks, banks who have really, these operators might have really important data for you. Uh, I'm not saying that we necessarily, uh, of, uh, of 
need to know all the informations about the bank accounts, but at least the minimum standard should be that they, these operators should be obliged to give the competent authorities the information regarding their clients, who is their client, because that's the basis for us to continue with the control. Unless we know who is their client, and we don't know who is the operator from the website because he didn't fulfill his uh, duty. He didn't fulfill uh, the requirement of the, of the consumer rights directive. Then we can't continue with the control. So if these operators have this information, they should be obliged to give this information to competent authorities. Uh, Last but not least is the to, uh, the to order a hosting service provider or the ESSP to remove, disable, or restrict access to an online interface. The basis is there in the e-commerce directive. I showed you the articles. So uh, for the time being, if, if, if the national legal frameworks are correctly trans transposed, we should have the legal basis. But here in this regulation, it is clearly said uh, the power is there, so it might be easier for the competent authorities, not uh, in this field, in the field of food law, to, to carry out the control, if we would get such, such powers. Second topic, responsibility of e-platforms. It was discussed yesterday a lot. Uh, e-platforms, it is... It, it, will be a, it is a challenge, and it will be a challenge for competent authorities to, to, uh, to, uh, to analyze the activity of e-platforms. There is a uh, case law of the European Court of Justice, which is uh, the case law eBay L'Oreal. You might read this, uh, this, uh, this judgment. And within this judgment, it is said that as long as the service provider remains in his neutral role. He is not influencing the offers. He only provides his service uh, technical thing. He provides the possibility for other operators to sell products via his platform. And he is not, he's not having any, uh, any, any influence on the offers. Then he remains in his neutral role. But once he becomes active, he starts influencing the offers, optimizing the offers. Um, then probably he steps out of this role and the secondary liability thing, which I showed you in Article 14, is no longer uh, in effect and they are liable for the content as the deferred players to whom they enable to use their platform. So this is e-marketplaces, e-commerce directed for the time being. But for the future, maybe it would be worth thinking of the position of e-platforms who store data of recipients of the service and who enable the other operators to carry out business on their platforms. Especially when we heard all about all the data these operators are having and maybe are really influencing the offers, uh, business models of other operators. So at least we should think of the responsibilities like they should enable to use their platform only to register operators. They should ensure completeness of mandatory information requirements. Uh, the, all the um, forms the operators need to fulfill before they can use the platform, they, they could be set in such a way that the mandatory food information is there. To provide visible information to consumers regarding unsafe products. Yesterday we heard that, uh, we heard a colleague from eBay saying it is a matter of eBay and the third operator, but the co co uh, consumers don't get any information where, or dedicated space where would be the information according to Article 19 of general food law informing that this product it was unsafe and was, uh, was taken from the market. Uh, to take down non-compliant products, to provide any relevant information, data or documents to competent authorities. Responsibility of payment service providers. Uh, that was mentioned several times. I, I mentioned uh, the power which uh, the competent authorities should try to, to reach. 
the power to ask any physical or legal person to provide them with the information which is necessary for, for their control. And the minimal basis should be uh, the information about who is behind the website. And once the, all the member states have it, and if we keep to the EU, EU EU scale, then we should be capable through ad administrative assistance and cooperation to reach this information in case one of uh, the, the payment service provider is located in one member state, is not replying to another uh, member state, then it should be possible to, through, through the cooperation, to, to ask for this information. But we need to have these powers as competent authorities individually in all 27 or 28 member states. Uh, registration notification of activity. This is a crucial thing maybe with regard to non-harmonized products, especially food supplements, for example. We see in tobacco directive, if you go into the tobacco directive, there the operators are obliged to register both in the member states where they, uh, where they are based and also in the member states where their customers are located. In food law, this doesn't, is not, it's not like this. In the food law, they must register only in the member states where they are located. We were discussing about it in the flat working group. Uh, either this could be introduced to all, pro to, to all operators, to all products, or this could be introduced only, for example, to those operators who are selling food supplements, which there is no harmonization, and each member, oh, there is a basic harmonization, there is a directive, but we all know the problem, and some member states don't consider a supplement a supplement, they consider it medicine, etc. So through this registration, the operators would be forced to get in touch with the competent authority with the, uh, in the member states when, where they want to sell the product, and through this contact, they would maybe be informed about the fact uh, that some uh, supplements are not, uh, are not uh, legal in one member state, and the, uh, the member state competent authorities would be informed about the existence of the operation of this, opera uh, of this uh, operator. And last but not least is the enforcement of sanctions. Uh, one side is food fraud criminal investigation, big things, police powers, courts, okay? This is, of course, important. But there's also work of the competent authorities which doesn't reach these levels. We control uh, medicinal claims, we control misinterpretation, we control not that someone didn't fulfill the requirements of Article 14. These things won't go to the criminal investigation. These, uh, these uh, things will stay on the level of administrative procedures, of administrative punishments. So in case in the Czech Republic we impose a fine to an operator in, sorry, uh, to in France, for example, <laughs> in France, and the operator in France is, uh, ha is having a website in the Czech language. Of course, the Czech authority is competent to control such a website. So we constant, uh, we say this is a non-compliant website. We ask the French authorities to take the measure with regard to this website. Okay, they will, they will act on the basis of OCR and they will take the action. But if we decide in the Czech Republic to impose the fine, which is possible according to the Czech law, and the decision is there, is in force, and the, the entity in France doesn't want to pay the fine, it should be possible to ask the French customs to enforce this fine. It is possible on the level of uh, criminal law, but as far as, as far as I know, it is not working really in the world of administrative sanctions. And it is not only with the, with the subject matter as medicinal claims, etc. It would be also with, the, with respect to the cooperation with the payment service providers, for example. If they are obliged in the Czech Republic to answer to our questions and the payment service provider is located in France, we would impose the fine to him because he didn't reply to our question and we couldn't proceed with our, with our control. And then we will stop because probably for the time being there is no agreement between France and the Czech Republic on the enforcement of the sanction. So this is something what should be looked at 
uh, at least on the level of the Commission, uh, on the level of member states, whether there, uh, there isn't a space for improvement, which would actually help us to, to, to carry out this type of controls. And um, yes, think out of the box. Yesterday it was mentioned. We need to think out of the box because uh, e-commerce is not a typical control to which our uh, inspectors are used to. And uh, that's why we also need to be kind of brave and ask for the powers which are not usual uh, in, the normal, in, uh, in the normal type of controls of brick and mortar stores. We need to have specific powers, otherwise we can't uh, provide to the citizens uh, the service they are asking for. Okay, that's 